Now I know what you're probably thinking. God, I hope this is clickbait and I'm sorry, it's not. Autodesk has made some changes as of May 14th, 2020. The educational version of Maya is not free for everybody. I'm gonna share with you what we know so far, what that means for you, and some additional thoughts that I have about this whole thing. Because I have some thoughts about this whole thing. For anyone who doesn't know, you have been able to get Autodesk Maya, 3ds Max, and pretty much everything Autodesk makes for free if you are a student. Now, the first version I ever downloaded was like 2011 or 2012, so ever since then, and I think before, you've been able to get a free copy of Maya, which is everything that you would need. There's no restrictions, there's no watermarks, there's nothing weird. It's just a little pop-up that says, it's the student version. It cannot be used for non-commercial work. That's the only limitation we've ever really had. And that has been available to anyone who says they're a student. You didn't even have to use an EDU email. You didn't have to prove it. You just said, hey, I'm a student, give me software. Which has been great because it's made it very accessible for everyone to get access to using and learning Maya. Which if you're not familiar with is kind of the main industry standard tool that all of us animators use. Now that license that you would get when you would tell them you're a student, you would get a three year license of the version of Maya that you were downloading. So if you got a version in 2015, you were good until 2018, until 2015 would expire and it probably wasn't available anymore. So you'd then pick up 2016, 2017, 2018, or possibly 2019, right? So you would kind of just cycle through and every three years you'd make sure you have a new copy of Maya if you hadn't already upgraded. Well, that workflow is gone. It's done, no more of that. As of March of this year, actually, we had a change to the licensing program as they kind of preempted what they're doing now. In March, they made a change that no longer was it going to be a three-year license, it was going to be a one-year license. So they were kind of gearing for this already. So let's get to the stuff we may not already know. On May 14th, 2020, this email went out. This is what I got from Autodesk. And it basically just says, all users in the United States seeking free educational access to their products and services will be asked to confirm their eligibility. So what that means you need to do is provide additional documentation as proof of enrollment or employment at an educational institution, an approved educational institution that is qualified. So what does that mean? For some people, it means nothing. But for a lot of people watching, for probably the majority of people watching my channel, this is going to impact all of us a lot. So let's dig deeper. If we follow the learn more link, uh, we get this PDF. I'm making this PDF available if you want to check this out. I've got a bit.ly link down below. It's a really long link to get to this. So I've shortened it and it's a bit.ly. Um, but you can click this if you want to read this on your own. It's also dated March 4th, 2020. So even though this came out in May, they've had this change ready for a while, which is interesting. Personally, I would have waited until after a global pandemic to confirm that you're part of this big Jumanji game, but you know, do your thing, Autodesk, I guess. So this PDF answers a few questions that we have. First of all, why would they make this change? And again, we are gonna talk about what this means in just a second, but the first question a lot of people have is, why change this? What's going on? I think it's that a lot of people are probably downloading the free version of Maya, and they're probably doing freelance work and commercial work when they're not supposed to. Because the software doesn't have real restrictions, and if you're not sharing the actual project file or if the employer doesn't care or the client doesn't care, there's a way to just use it and pretend it's commercial, right? My guess is they're trying to eliminate this misuse and get paid for people using their software, which makes sense. From a business standpoint, I don't really blame them for that. However, I have other thoughts on this and we'll come back to that. Anyone who wants to get the free software has to go through this new process. Students aged 13 years or older and enrolled at a qualified educational institution may still qualify. That also applies to educators. If you're employed at one of those schools, that works for you as well. And the use of the license is the same. You still can't use it for commercial use, blah, blah, blah. But the real question we have is, what is a qualified educational institution? Like who still gets access? And also, does this affect international students? Because it's kind of said, you know, if you're trying to get access in the United States, does that mean you're, you're free and clear otherwise? No. Is this a global requirement? Yes, it is. Autodesk is rolling out the requirement to customers to verify eligibility globally. So I don't know why it just said United States on the last page because it affects everybody. My guess is the email just targeted me because I'm in the US, but who knows? So let's dig into who qualifies. Basically, any kind of school qualifies if they are accredited public or private institutions. Now, does that mean they're the only ones that are allowed to have it? Uh, it's a little bit shaky. Uh, some of you guys may know that some of the animation online schools are, some of them are accredited, some of them are not. For example, Anim School is accredited, so they would be covered. Animation Mentor is not accredited, so does that mean Animation Mentors don't get Maya anymore? Not necessarily. This is part of the reason I wanted to make this video. For people like me who went to Animation Mentor and loved it, and I highly recommend it, and I'll link to their school down below because I'll never stop talking about how much I like the school. Obviously, software is a big deal if you're gonna sign up for a school. Do you get access automatically? Things like that. Also, what happens when you graduate? What if you can't open your shot anymore? What if you didn't play blast it and you can literally just never play blast your work without paying 
some big monthly fee to access your work in the first place. This is a real concern that we now have to be thinking about, but I reached out to Animation Mentor because I knew that this was gonna be a big thing on their plate and I figured they'd probably have something to say about it and lucky for us, they did. Animation Mentor shared that they are working with Autodesk right now to determine a solution for the students. They don't have any specifics yet as the details are still being worked out, but they are aware of the issue. They've been meeting with Autodesk to discuss it and they do have a general plan that they're working towards and will be sharing information with the student body soon. So if you are an Animation Mentor student or considering Animation Mentor, you should be good. We don't know yet exactly what's going to happen, what that means, but it sounds like they're going to take care of it. I don't know how it's all gonna work, but I definitely would not rule out Animation Mentor as like, oh, well, they can't get software anymore, gotta pick another school. No, I don't, I don't think that's the case at all. Now, to be fair, this change was actually made back in March and we just didn't have to prove it. So even though you needed to go to an accredited school, you still could have just said, hey, I go to CalArts, hey, I go to Ringling, and you could have just picked a school that was accredited without really any consequence. However, as of now, we have to submit documentation to prove it. So, you know, that, that's like a lot of companies, that's, it, it's weird because this is something that a lot of companies do already. Autodesk is just changing this to match everybody else, but because they've been the way they've been for so long, causing a big uproar and I'm not happy about it either. I get it, but I'm not happy about it. So now if you are going to qualify, you can do one of three things. They may have some kind of instant verification or single sign on thing where you log into the portal, you connect to the school and then you log into your school account if that works out, depending on how they've like linked up with your educational institution. If not, you may need to submit a document review where you send in registration information, a transcript of some kind, some kind of a document that has your name, the school's name, and the date. It needs to have a date in the current term or within three months of the term. So if you've just graduated, like now, if you're just graduating, within the last three months, make sure that you get some kind of a document and you send that into Autodesk immediately or you're gonna miss your window. The other thing is that if you are going through this process and you need the software now and you have to get an approval, their answer is that you need to get a free trial. In the meantime, that 30 days will cover you until whatever solution happens. Again, the document's down below. If you want more details, you wanna know every single document that you can send in, things like that. But I do wanna point out that doing this verification will give you the software for one year if you qualify. And at the end of that year, you're going to need to renew doing the exact same process. No longer can we just get the software and then have it for a while, keep working on our demo reels. Like if you're not going to a school, you, you probably won't have the software anymore. So that leads to our next section. What are your options? If you don't qualify for this, or if you do currently, but you're not going to once you graduate, if you're about to finish school, there are three realistic options that you have at this point. And I don't count paying full price for commercial Maya as a realistic option, because let's be real, to go from free to $1,600 a year, no one's gonna be doing that. So three options for you. Option number one is if you live in a specific region that you have access to Maya Indy, there's a link down below for Maya Indy, that means Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the UK, or the US. If you live in any of those places, you can get Maya Indie, which is a reduced price, independent artist, freelancer version of Maya. It's literally Maya as you expect it without the student pop-up. This is actually what I have. Uh, it's $250 for a year. It gives you a commercial version of Maya to make money and do whatever you wanna do with your animation. The only limit is that you can't make more than $100,000 a year using the software, which is not something I have to worry about. So that's what I'm using. <laughs> so if you need to be using Maya and you've been using Maya forever and you're about to get a job and you just need to finish your demo reel and you know whatever, 250 bucks will give you one year of Maya Indie. I do not know if this version of Maya, if this license of Maya will continue to exist for all time. The way they put it on their website is that they're piloting a version, they're testing it out. When I bought this, it was supposed to be a limited offer that ended in October of 2019. And I bought it in like November and I asked them, I'm like, hey, like, and I didn't know that. I was like, hey, like, how long is this deal good for? And they're like, oh, that expired in October. Click buy, immediately get, and make sure I get it before they change anything. It's still there. So if you want Maya, a one year copy that's not student, it's commercial, you can get it down below, I'll put a link. One more thing to add in about the Maya Indie license, if you are going to sign up for it, be very aware of the auto renewal process. I've heard some, we were talking in the Twitch stream about this the other day, and it seems that the way it may work is that when your one year of Maya Indie expires, that goes away and it will auto renew you at the full price of Maya, which nobody wants. Be very aware of that. What you may need to do is cancel ahead of time. And then if they still have the Maya Indie at that time, you can renew using like a direct link to it and then get it again for the same price. If it's still there, we don't know. But if you don't live in one of those five places, well, your other option is Maya LT, which is a light version of Maya. 
I'm also linking this page down below. This is the comparison page that shows you Maya versus LT, the regular price and all the features. One thing you'll notice is that Maya LT for an annual license costs $265. That's $15 more than Maya Indy. So if you have access to Maya Indy, that is a way better deal than Maya LT. This is kind of a ripoff when you compare those price points because Maya LT is a version of Maya that's more for the indie game maker. So it's not as geared towards a lot of other things. If we go down to like 3D animation and rigging, you'll notice that you don't get animation layers. Well, you do, but you only get two of them. You don't get unlimited layers. I don't know why you only get two layers, but you do. Okay. You don't get the anim save and load animation, which if you've ever kind of troubleshooted, copying and saving your animation, backing it up because something broke, you know, you may know that tool. You also don't have certain constraints, scale, geometry, normal, and tangent. And if I keep going down to animation deformation, you lose a lot of things. You lose a lot of these deformers. You lose the substitute geometry, wrinkle, wrap deformers, sculpt deformers. A lot of these things will come with your character mods. If you have custom hair, custom cloth for your character that's non-standard, you can't use them anymore because you may have used a wrap deformer to get that cloth to stick to your character's body. And as well as that, there's a lot of other things missing. For example, there's no motion graphics tool set, which for me is a deal breaker. I love the MASH tool set. You don't have MASH. You do not have the camera sequencer at all. You don't have Arnold renderer. You don't even have hardware renderer. You're stuck with Maya software renderer, which is weird and awful. So, you know, you're not gonna be rendering anything. You also don't have Python scripting. You do not have a viewport 2.0 API. So that's a huge bummer. You do have export options to Unreal and Unity. So you could hypothetically send your stuff elsewhere, but you don't have an Alembic file exporter. So, you know, if you need to send your stuff with Alembic, can't do that either. No node editor, no file referencing. So you can't reference your files anymore. Can't reference in your rig. You have to import everything. It's different. It's important that you know the difference. If you don't qualify for the educational version of Maya, your options are pay for Maya full price, which mm, the indie license of Maya, which if you can get it, it's probably the best option if you need to keep using Maya. Or if you don't, if you can't, Maya LT is what you've got left. Or option three, you switch software, which realistically, I think a lot of people are gonna do. Cause look, let's be real. There's a lot of amazing software out there. There's new animation tools that people are developing. I've seen a lot of people, we've been talking about it on Twitch. If you don't know, I go live on Twitch three days a week. We do animation live, we do a whole bunch of stuff. We're probably gonna start doing a lot of animation, not in Maya. I will continue animating in Maya. I'm gonna continue using Maya cause that's what I'm used to. That's what I do my character animation in. And I think it has some of the most robust tools for character animation, but if companies like Blender are watching, please send this to Blender. There are a few things from my limited understanding of Blender that I know that are a little bit more limited in that tool, the graph editor and some other animation deformers and things like that. If they come out swinging, they see this as an opportunity. And if Blender starts making some, some added feature sets to the animation pipeline, we could see a lot of people just give up on Maya and switch over to Blender. Because realistically, in this industry, things change, you know? Like we can be upset about this all day and I will be. I'm gonna be upset about this for like a week or two and I'm gonna complain about it and you're gonna hear about it. But the thing is you can't be at a job where you use one software and then your producer or your director or somebody comes up and says, hey, we're actually gonna do this differently. We're gonna do this software instead. You can't sit there and go, "Ugh, I don't wanna. <laughs> Let's learn this one. You can't do that. You're not gonna stay on the project very long because they want people working with them who are upbeat, who are positive, who are willing to learn and adapt. And that's what this requires. You have to adapt and learn and evolve. And it looks like we're all about to consider evolving at this time as well. Now, I don't know your budget. Maybe you can stick with Maya, maybe you can't, but it's time to consider alternatives if you can't. And I know some people here are like, yeah, Blender, sweet. Everyone's gonna come join the community. And other people are gonna be like, ugh, Blender, what? I know, new software can be scary. New changes like this cannot, they're not always fun. But that's the way this industry works. That's the way everything works, right? Like the world is shut down right now because of a global pandemic. There's nothing we can do about that except for evolve and try to do our best, right? And that doesn't mean it's gonna be fun or easy, but when it comes to learning new software, that's something that we should all be excited about because it just makes us more versatile artists. So if you already know Maya, you don't have to forget it. You don't even necessarily have to change, but for some people, it's time to learn a new tool. Blender is free. I have never touched it in my life. I will be learning Blender. I don't know yet if that means I'm gonna be changing the stuff I make on this channel. I'll keep you in the loop. But bottom line is Blender's a free tool and it's a very powerful tool that people are making some really crazy stuff in. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that we're gonna see a huge loss in customers for Autodesk. I don't know why they did this. I don't really agree with it because I think long-term they're gonna lose a lot of their customer base to Blender. 
because Blender's already destroying Maya when it comes to new users. More people are joining the Blender community than joining the Maya user base. And that's with both of them being accessible and free. More people know Blender's free than know Maya's free, but still, now that you have to pay for Maya in most cases, I don't know why anyone would choose to go to Maya over Blender, considering how much cool stuff's being made on the internet in Blender. And Cinema 4D, I mean, there's other tools too. You could do Cinema 4D if you're gonna pay for software. Cinema 4D is pretty incredible, but it is more expensive than Maya even, but that's also because it has a very specific use case. It's, it's, it's pretty cool, honestly. And I wanna end with this. You know me, you know that what I do here is animation content. And animation is not specific to a software. You don't have to know Maya, you don't have to know Blender, you don't have to know any one particular tool. Animation is a craft. It's something that you can apply the principles to any style, any medium. It is storytelling, it's filmmaking, it's performance, it's mechanics, it's understanding motion and life, and it's a whole bunch of things. So wherever you need to apply those skills, you'll figure it out. And you know, you don't have to be super stoked on it right now, but bottom line is we're gonna need to do our work somewhere. And another important thing is that Maya is not like dead to us. Maya is still the industry standard as of now, and it's still gonna be something that we talk about because most people who have Maya currently, you still have it. As far as I know, your current license that you have for the one or three years, I don't think that's changed. If you guys know differently, if you're starting to open it and you're getting like error messages, please let me know in the comments. But as far as I know, whatever version you currently have, once that expires, you will then have to deal with this system. I'm not 100% sure on that. We'll find out soon. We will still be talking about Maya. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. I hope this gave some understanding, some clarity to what's going on. Again, the links for everything are down below, including the stuff for my Twitch page if you wanna come chat about this live, or if you want to support the channel, I have a link to my Patreon down below to help support these videos, to do animation tutoring for you, to also probably at this point start paying for new animation tools for me to test out, review, and let you know what other tools that are available are actually worth your time and your money. So we'll get to all that, but in the meantime, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.